So we were walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Good afternoon and welcome to everybody. On behalf of the City of Cleveland, Cleveland State University, and the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, we welcome you to this dedication of this magnificent building here, our Campus International School. I'm Rob Spademan. I work at Cleveland State University, and I'm honored to be your MC through this program today. Before we get started, though, I'd, I'd be remiss if we didn't recognize these wonderful six seventh and eighth graders who played this wind ensemble number four. So let's hear it for them. I, I wish I had your talent. I played an instrument all through school. It never sounded anything like what you guys just did. Congratulations. So today is indeed a special day in the sense that this vision we had many, many years ago and this cooperation between three different partners in this city brought together this school. And while there were hundreds of people that played an integral role in bringing this to fruition today, there was a leadership team of a few individuals who really helped get it off the ground and kept it moving and br brought it down to earth. And so we'd like to hear from them today. And first up, I'd like to start with Principal Beers, who of all the folks we hear from today was the feet on the ground to make it all work. And I remember seeing her, her a couple weeks into the school year and she said, you know, we're still forming our habits around what's happening and what goes on in this school. And so give us some more time and we'll get there. So I'm excited to hear if we're there yet, Julie. Let's welcome Julie Beers. being so emotional today. So um, as I look out and see all the faces of the friends along the way that have made this happen, I just want to thank, I wish I could call out every one of you, but I just want to thank all of you. I don't think there's a greater sight to look up and see the little hands of the students peering through the railings or look behind me on our beautiful faces of our students in fourth grade peering down. Um, I, I just want to first of all thank CMSD CSU and the mayor for partnering to create this incredible opportunity for the students here. It is an honor to lead alongside Dr. Ranabate, this staff and student body. We know this is just the beginning for our students as we continue to grow our knowledgeable, lifelong learners. We can't wait to see all of the things they will do to make our world a better place. I know we have innovative, creative thinkers who truly we will see signs of this school for many, many years to come as we see all the great things they will do in our city of Cleveland, our state of Ohio, 
and our world. I thank all of you for being here today, and I cannot tell you what this means to me to have the opportunity to lead such an amazing staff and student body. Thank you for coming today. I, I do want to just call out special friends who um, are the construction company, Icon. If you're from Icon, if you wouldn't mind standing up today. And then we have our, well, let's care of our Icon. They got so, so tired of seeing me this summer, and they're still tired of me calling them and saying we need your help still. We also have the architects here, um, Amy Ekman, um, way up on top from Perkins and Will, flew in from Chicago to be here today. And we have our architect team from Ben Design who are also here today, if you could stand up and be acknowledged as well. Chris Smith from Ben Design. Thank you, Julie. You know, uh, about nine years ago, President Berkman came to Cleveland State University, and I think one of his very first ideas was that if we're indeed going to build a neighborhood that people want to live in, we have to have a good public school there. So this whole thing started with that simple idea. And I remember uh, him saying, we're going to get this going, and I said, how fast? And he said, it's going, Rob and it took off. And I think that people like Julian Earls played a key role in all this. Julian, would you please stand? <laughs> Christine Fowler-Mack, also a significant role. Please stand. And of course, Ron Abate. Ron, please stand. And I so remember that first year, I think Ron and Julie actually had paintbrushes at one point and they were painting the schools to get them ready for opening day. So we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Ron Berkman's vision and leadership throughout. Please welcome President Ron Berkman. I didn't envision it would be such an emotional day. <laughs> For me also, um, because it truly is, it truly is, and I say it with all sincerity, uh, a dream come true. Um, I mean, we had the opportunity to collectively, with Eric, with his team, with the mayor, imagine this school, imagine the concept, imagine what it would be. Um, it started in a Sunday school uh, in the back of Reverend Chalker's church on 30th Street. Uh, um, I remember running uh, the, the run up to getting it open and uh, Ron Abadi and Julie uh, washing, cleaning, dusting, preparing, etc. Uh, it started with 120 students, okay? Uh, and um, this is what it's become. This is the realization of this dream. And to me, I mean, what was happening inside the building was of course of paramount importance. But I always dreamt and wished that we could have a physical structure that would be a testament to what's been built here and a testament to the students who are receiving this glorious opportunity. And this is a testament to what you all have done. I need to uh, thank the members of my board of trustees um, and our foundation board um, for believing in a crazy idea. I mean, who's going to build a K-8 through school at a university? Don't we have other things that we need to do? Um, and uh, and the, our, from our board here is uh, Tom Adler, David Gunning, and from our foundation board, uh, Linda Kane, Lee Corman, Steve Minter, Daria Roebuck, thank you all for 
helping and believing. As I said, as, as Rob said, um, it was for me about building a campus as well as building a neighborhood. Um, because you never wanted the campus to be an island in a neighborhood, you wanted the campus to be an anchor in the neighborhood. Um, and the greatest anchor for neighborhoods, um, the most significant anchor for neighborhoods are great schools, um, great public schools. And I credit, uh, I credit Dr. Earls, Christine Fowler Mack, the task force, which was beat week after week, okay, to finish this plan with really coming up with the inspiration to pursue the international baccalaureate path here. They saw where the puck was going, okay. They saw that this was an exceptional educational foundation and they pursued it. So the school has made an incredible difference. Um, it's made more of a difference on the Cleveland State University campus than I would have initially imagined. Um, in my years in the City University of New York, we had schools on almost all our campuses in the City University of New York, right? But there wasn't probably 10 faculty members on any of those campuses who even knew we had a school on that campus. Um, they were truly, they were truly hidden. Um, and uh, they existed only in place, not in person. And I'm grateful to the faculty, and some of them are here today. I see Professor Sridhar is here today, and um, others are here today who have actually taught in the campus international school. I believe last year 40-some faculty passed through the doors. 40 faculty from Cleveland State passed through the doors. Many, many of our students, okay, uh, passed through the doors. Uh, this campus has embraced the Campus International School like I've never seen a school embraced before. So I want to thank my community for doing that. Again, the mayor, uh, you know, the mayor, um, you, you give him an idea. You know, I like the idea, why don't you go get it done? Okay. <laughs> Let me know, okay, when well, it's time to cut the ribbon. No, no, he's been involved in every, every step of it, okay, every step of it, um, and been supportive of every step of it. Uh, Eric, you know, um, again, Eric, you know, uh, imagine this. Uh, Eric has been, um, you know, our partner through getting all of this done. Um, some of it pretty difficult, okay. Um, the school has done amazing things. We had the opportunity, Eric and I, last year to receive the 2016 Shirley Schwartz Urban Impact Award from the Council of Great City Schools, a national coalition representing 70 of the largest urban school systems. Each year, they pick one partnership nationally. They pick one partnership nationally that has an exceptional impact um, on student success. And last year, they picked this partnership around the Campus International School. But the heart and soul of the Campus International School are the principal, Julie Beers, and Ranabadi, our professor in residence. And I think on days they alternate between who's the heart and who's the soul, okay? But they both play each role exceptionally well. Um, and, I, and what we have here today, again, would not have been possible without this unique collaboration, this incredibly unique collaboration between Julie and Ron Abate. Um, so you really are, you really have brought us here um, and we're ever grateful for you bringing us here. Now you need to bring us the rest of the way. Um, so we're at K through nine, we're going to K through 12, we're interacting with MC Square, we have created an educational park in downtown Cleveland. Thank you all for me 
This is a crowning achievement. Thank you so much. Thank you, President Berkman. So if you thought the wind ensemble was terrific, we're about to have a little intermezzo right now with our jazz band. These are sixth graders in the school. Let's hear it. group of great musicians between these two groups, future members of the Cleveland Orchestra. Let's hear it for both again. So I was talking, talking to Eric Gordon earlier, and he said, you know, a lot of universities want a school like this, and they just sort of throw the idea at school systems and then run from it. And that is certainly not the case here, as he stated to me earlier, but we cannot underestimate the importance of the relationship with the school system and the pieces and parts that they brought to this equation to make it all happen. Please welcome Eric Gordon. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm the school guy, you get to be really excited. Good afternoon, everyone. There you go, there you go. It is really exciting to be here in this beautiful new facility in a program that has worked hard to earn and create this space. This space that you're in, and I hope you'll stay to take the tours and see it, is the outcome of the dreaming of the children in this school over the past eight years. So we could not have built this space eight years ago because we didn't know what it was supposed to be. We do now, and this is, it really is with Ms. Beer's leadership, with Dr. Abate and so many other people, the, the outcome and the exhibit of the dreams of the children that attend this school. So congratulations, everyone. Let's celebrate a beautiful, beautiful facility and a beautiful day. So Campus International is our first international baccalaureate school uh, with the goal of helping, and you heard it in the creed in the, in, that our school, uh, students sang earlier, uh, recognizing our common humanity and our shared guardianship of the planet to create a better and more peaceful world. And I hope you didn't uh, miss this, the t-shirts that the students designed and are now wearing that have all of the different ways that they uh, show that work. There's one goal in mind, and the students are able to recite them, and even on day one, Ms. Beers had them doing so, uh, for our students to become inquirers, thinkers, communicators, risk takers, knowledgeable, principled, caring, open-minded, balanced, and reflective. Not the three R's that everybody says we should be doing, but the things that help us take the, those tools we have, reading and writing and arithmetic, which is not an R, by the way, um, and use them. 
for where they're going. And so uh, it, it is that that has created this space. This is a school where every student has access to Mandarin instruction beginning in kindergarten. And as you saw through all of our performances, through their design of their school time and resources, flexible scheduling that allows for extra art, music, dance, video, research, science, math, whatever it is that, that compels that student to dream and to fit into those spaces. None of that obviously would happen without all of the partners and, and you heard a great deal about uh, the role that Cleveland State has played um, and particularly important in the role that faculty engagement and student engagement has played in this space. Uh, it, it's exciting to be here opening this building. It's the culmination of a number of years and, and uh, a lot of work to get this partnership built. This uh, building is now enrolled at 735 students and we are continuing to build out K through 12. And there's a lot of people that made this happen. I want to thank a number of people. Some of you have heard, but others I want to really uh, acknowledge. Uh, first, some guests that I'm thrilled that are here today. Uh, we have a uh, member of our teaching community, a now retired teacher, and a member of the State Board of Education, Ms. Merle Johnson is here. Merle, would you stand and be recognized? I, I can tell you from firsthand from having worked uh, for Merle for a number of years when she was a teacher uh, that we are thrilled to have her on the state board and know that the state superintendent is now working for Merle and her, and her advocacy for our kids here in Cleveland. We also uh, have Carrie McCormick here. Uh, I'd like to invite Carrie to stand. Thank you for joining us as well, Councilman McCormick. Uh, who uh, a large number of his constituency is engaged and he's been actively engaged here as well. Uh, we already heard from Dr. Berkman, but I just want to say just a little bit more uh, and maybe tell the rest of the story. So Dr. Berkman uh, has, had has talked about the humble part of participating in this project, um, but what Dr. Berkman didn't share is um, it, from the day that he joined, he started using the word education park, that this was going to be an education park, and that in his vision that meant from the littlest learners to postgraduate beyond learners. And this is one of those pieces that we have been able to do as a school district and a university. Um, but uh, I mean it when I say there are lots of universities and uh, uh, presidents of universities who say they want this. And in fact, as you heard, there are lots who have allowed a school to be here. In fact, we had a school on this campus in the past and actually left it. Uh, but what isn't said is whether or not the, the president's leadership and everyone who works for him is willing to make it happen. It is not an easy thing to do to share completely different uh, bureaucratic systems, uh, different, different uh, needs of faculty, uh, what our faculty need and what university faculty need, and different student learners, and how do you integrate literally kindergarten students among freshmen on campus. And, and it is because of that level of determination and Dr. Berkman's leadership and the leadership of his team who quickly uh, bought into what Dr. Berkman intended to do here and has accomplished here that we're here to Today. If you need an example of this, and I'm going to thank the other people that made that happen, this building is owned by the Cleveland School District and our taxpayers. The land it stands on is owned by the university. So think about the partnership it takes. If they get mad at us, I have to figure out how to pick this up and take it away. <laughs> and if we get mad at them, I have to figure out, wait, that doesn't work out too well. Think about the level of dedication it takes for two what are traditionally considered bureaucratic organizations to figure out how to build a building on somebody else's land and how to allow that to occur instead of this being the chemistry building or some other uh, thing that is explicitly mission-centric as opposed to implicitly. And so I, I think we really need to thank again Dr. Berkman and, and Cleveland State. Thank you. You heard a little, but I, I have to say again, I, I'm going to ask our portfolio team, that's uh, Christine Fowler-Mack and the rest of her team who are here to please stand. I know Angie Shaker's here, I know Joe Mishler's here, a number of you. Christine also, you will stand, I can wait. There you go. These are.
these people who stood or waved, hopefully, are a small a number of the people who are in our research and design space and help us think about what schools kids want and families will choose. And campus is one of our leading examples of that, and so thank you for your leadership. Uh, in that. I also want to recognize, I know uh, Pat Zahn and Gary Sauter were here uh, in the back. If you would please stand and be recognized. This is our facilities and operations team. This is not your typical K through 8 space and it takes people who are willing to be atypical even in the more traditional uh, facilities and construction to get us to here and so I, I'm uh, particularly proud of what our construction and facilities team uh, did to allow this to happen so thank you uh, for your work. Uh, we have a partner with us today from the Ohio Facility Construction Commission which is our co-owner so there's a third owner the university owns the land uh, we own a third of the mortgage and two-thirds of the mortgage is actually owned by the state of Ohio and Bill Prentissel is here and I don't know where Bill, oh Bill please stand, Bill Prentissel. <laughs> So let me be clear again in what partnership means. This building would not be allowed under the rules and regulations for construction of schools in Ohio. It is because Bill bought into what we were trying to do that we got to take advantage of what is called the innovative construction space for the facilities commission that allowed us to do some of the things that makes this building unique and different and to essentially take dreams of children and put it on paper and stand it up. So Bill, thank you for your leadership in Columbus. So, uh, Julie and your, uh, your faculty, uh, you, we've heard already about the tremendous leader. You heard the applause we got in our founding leader that has led this from the days of painting it and getting it ready to the days of standing here and getting it ready. <laughs> Um, but I want to make sure that every one of the educators who are here, all of our CMSD, CIS educators get acknowledged. This work of urban education, particularly in this time, is the single, in my humble opinion, most difficult and most important work and most under-recognized work. Um, but I know the quality of the educators in all of my classrooms and the educators who lead them. So if Ms. Beers and your faculty would stand and please be recognized. And let's make sure we know how important they are. And, and certainly, last but not least, I just need to acknowledge our families, our student scholars, their families and caregivers, the taxpayers that helped do this. Uh, last week, we learned a lesson that, frankly, I could have told you before the report card came out. We are not where we want to be. I knew that. I knew that before the headlines came out. But we are here. And I will also tell you, when you look across the state, lots of people are not where they want to be but they are not here either. And that is because our student scholars and their families and caregivers have entrusted us knowing we're not where we need to be, but that we will get there. And you're here and you're part of our solution. And I'm so grateful that you've entrusted our educators with your children. And so could we please acknowledge all of our families and caregivers that have made this So thank you and welcome home, everyone. I'm going to turn it back and let's uh, conclude this so we can celebrate and take some tours. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Eric. I'd like to mention that Senator Williams sent along a proclamation today. I won't read it, but she sends her best wishes and support for the future of the school. So the last piece of the puzzle is the mayor. And you know, I was in his office a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about the qualities of the next president of Cleveland State University. And he had a lot of terrific ideas for us, one of which he said was he was trying to unlock the potential when he first came to City Hall as mayor of uh, everybody that worked in the city and hatch new ideas, new thoughts about ways to do things and realize some of the potential that this city has. And I think you will agree with me 
over the last several years that this city is in a much better place than it ever has been before. But one of the things that he said that a great leader has to have is the nerve to push the button. You can have all kinds of ideas, but if you don't have the nerve to actually go for it, you won't get there. Certainly, this school and his support is an example of that nerve. Please welcome Mayor Jackson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And how are you this afternoon? Great. Good, good. You know, I want to congratulate uh, Campus International, uh, the educators, the students, uh, the school district, uh, Dr. Berkman, Cleveland State, you know, all of those who are the beneficiary of this, including the entire uh, um, citizenry of the city of Cleveland. And I want to thank all of those who have already been mentioned, but uh, special thanks to those who we don't know about. The ones who put in a lot of work and did a lot of things that uh, carried the nuts and bolts to ensure that we are able to stand here and, and say the things that we, we are saying. I can remember in 2009, I think in the fall, that we first met and we talked about this, and then we met again, and Dr. Earls mentioned in 2010 in February, with then Superintendent uh, Dr. Sanders and, and Dr. Berkman, and, and, and as uh, both Dr. Berkman and, and, and the superintendent said, there were so many reasons why this would not work. So many reasons. But we, we quickly stopped talking about that. And we went to how is it that we will get this done? And what it meant was a lot of people had to do a lot of things that unconventional to them. But they, everybody stepped in. Everybody contributed to the success of this. The, just the smallest person in the smallest position up to the ones who would get to stand here. I can remember, um, as was mentioned, um, Reverend Chalka and the church uh, giving the back of itself, the back of the church, and that's where we opened. And then it became two locations. We knew we were outgrowing that, so we had to figure out how do we get to a permanent situation. Every, at every point and every juncture, uh, there could have been a time for us to say we did the best we could, we are successful as we could be, but this is as far as we could go. But it never happened. It never happened. Why? Because this is a university, this is a school system, and these are people who care about our children and care about the future of our children. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate you, Dr. Berkman, uh, Eric Gordon, and, and all of those who are part of not only this school, but the, but the school system in and of itself, and all those who really have a sincere heart and a genuine care about the children of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. So um, one more piece of business before we have some refreshments over there. Um, as most of you know, this is President Berkman's last year at the helm of Cleveland State University. So we wanted to create a permanent marker for this day and for this celebration today that will always be remembered. And if my team here would help unveil, we have created a special plaque which will be affixed in the entrance here. And I will read this. It's shorter than proclamation. Dedicated September 20th, 2017, our students, faculty, and staff are forever grateful to Cleveland State University President Ronald M. Berkman, whose guiding vision for an education park in downtown Cleveland led to the creation of our school. We also wish to thank Cleveland Mayor Frank G. Jackson and Cleveland Metropolitan School District CEOs Eugene T.W. Sanders and Eric S. Gordon for championing the unique partnership at the heart of Campus International School and providing a pathway to higher education and global citizenry for the young students of Cleveland. Julie Beers, Principal, Campus International School. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy some of your
is our second annual Campus International School Field Day Mud Run. I am so dirty! We are raising money for the school, especially moving into the new building next year to account for whatever might be needed. What we have here is a 25-acre obstacle course. My favorite part was, was climbing the cargo net. I've seen every child tackle every obstacle, which is what I love to see. A school called and said, hey, can I bring my kids out? I'm like, I guess we could try that. And it just went from there. And they're cheering for each other without even being asked to. Go, Sadie. Go, Sadie. Go, Sadie. Students, staff, parents, everyone has just kind of smiled and said, OK, we're going to have some mud this year. Do you guys think that you should do this next year too? Yeah! 